Hello, this is Daniel Mark, and today I am finally going to be doing my top 10 worst and top 10 best movies of 2014. Um, so yeah, this, one, this one's going to be top 10 worst movies of 2014. Uh, for top 10 best movies, I'll leave an annotation somewhere here. And yeah, so I'm going to be doing this similar to, similarly to how I did my top 10 um, most and least anticipated movies of 2015. Basically, I'm going to... And then I'm going to start off, uh, for honorable mentions, uh, yeah, I'm basically going to start off with the honorable and or dishonorable mentions, the yeah, honorable or dishonorable mentions, um, then I'm going to show you the number, like number 1, 2, 3, or 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and after the numbers, I'm going to show the poster to the movie, or a banner to the movie, and then a short video of me giving my thoughts, and then on to the next. Um, so yeah, in this case, I have three honorable mentions, and one, and let me just point out one of them. Um, actually, that I actually thought was pretty good, but then I rewatched and I didn't like it as much. And th that was actually the case for a few of these movies. I liked it when I first saw them, and then they slowly, I slowly started disliking them or didn't like them as much. So yeah, I have one movie. So yeah, one of the movies I, two of the movies I recently watched. Um, so yeah. So yeah, one of them is that situation. I just watched it, and, you know, and I slowly started disliking it. One of them, I just didn't like it all. Yeah, the other one I thought was actually pretty decent, but you know, looking back with the, uh, with all the plots and all the storylines going on, it it just seemed way too convoluted, and that's why it's an honorable mentions in this case. So yeah, three honorable mentions starting now. Okay, first off, wow, did I fuck up. I meant dishonorable mentions. Sorry. Um, so yeah, the dishonorable mentions were Equalizer, P51, Dragon Fighter, and Neighbors. So yeah, now, on to number 10. Number 10 is Heaven is for Real. So yeah, this is a movie that I thought was pretty good when it first came out. And I saw it again. I think I saw it twice. And I, I slowly started not really liking it as much. So yeah. The writing and the acting was, was pretty decent, I, w I will admit, the acting and the writing was pretty decent, but I, every time I saw it, I just thought the plot was a, was a bit more ridiculous, um, I, you know, it, the plot was a bit more ridiculous, as it kept going on, in my opinion, and then again, this is a, the move, one of the movies I liked when it first came out, and then, you know, it just became a little, a little bit more and more ridiculous, as many times as I watched it, um, so yeah, and I know it's based on true, apparently it's based on a true story, something like that, because it does say at the end it's based on a true story, or whatever. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that God is for real or God is not for real or whatever, um, or whatever heaven is for real or not. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that I don't think the movie portrayed the events as great as it could have been. Uh, now on to number nine. So yeah, number nine is another religious-based films, and I'm gonna admit there's actually a, a few religious-based films on this list. Um, so yeah, this one's gonna be n for number nine, Noah. So yeah, um, I do think the I do think I do think the acting was pretty decent. You know, Emma Stone, I mean Emma Watson, sorry, I do think Emma Watson and Russell Crowe, I do think they give it the best best shot. But I think the main issue with the movie. Was the writing? Um, the writing, in my opinion, just seemed a bit unre not unrealistic per se, but it it was heavily flawed in my opinion. Um, the a the actions the action scenes were pretty decent. Um, but there's just so many things that are just ridiculous and just didn't make sense. And there's many things that just happened just because it happened. And I do understand that this, again, this is actually based on a biblical story, so you know some of those situations could just be said they happened because God made it to be ha um happened or whatever. But, you know, in this film, you really don't buy it, because it's not really, honestly, the thing is, it's not really religious-based, um, which is kind of ironic, because it is a religious film. It's more of an action film. It's like a religious water road, if you know what I mean. It, yeah, I'm pretty sure, um, a religious water road, um, water road, um, it's from, that water road, water road, is from, like, the 90s, I believe. It's basically about these, it's about this group of people in this post-apocalyptic land, or, post-apocalyptic ocean, because the whole, you know, not universe, the whole earth has been, is underwater, and now everybody has to survive, and I do, and I think it's pretty similar to that, I, um, so, yeah, Noah, now, number eight.
aside from some shit religious movies, we also got some shit superhero movies. Amazing Spider-Man number two. Oh my gosh. Um. Oh my gosh. Um. So yeah, we we had how many comic book based films this year? Like eight, right? Yeah, we had um we had Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, Amazing Spider-Man, X-Men: Days of Future Past, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Sin City. Um, Snowpiercer is based on a French comic book, from what I know. Um, I know there's, like, I know there's a few other ones. Um, I know there's, I know there's a bit more. But, yeah. And, out of all the Marvel films, this is the only one to be in my top ten worst. The other three are my top ten best. Um, like, they're actually on the list. Now, if you guys want to see which place they got, you know, again, here. So, yeah. Um, annotations. Oh my gosh, but Amazing Spider-Man, what the? Okay, I don't know which one's worse, Amazing Spider, Amazing Spider-Man Two or Spider-Man Three. I'm I'm gonna be completely honest. I want to say the Amazing Spider-Man Two is a little bit better than Spider-Man Three, but not by much. Okay, so what's the problem with this? The acting was the acting was actually pretty good. It's the writing that was it was the writing was terrible. There were some parts that were actually pretty good. The writing was terrible. Um, it was too convoluted. There's too many villains. Um, because you have Rhino, you have Electro, and you have Green Goblin, and also, the campaign was terrible. Oh my gosh! Um, the campaign for the movie, like the, all the trailers and everything, basically showed the main plot point of the movie, which was sp spoilers. Um, Gwen Stacy is gonna die. So, yeah, I mean, the campaign for the movie was terrible. You you already knew what was gonna happen. I mean, half the movie was leaked already, like script wise and and whatever. Um, images too it was like half the movie is already leaked. We already knew the basic concept of the movie. There's just too many villains and it was just too convoluted. It was, it was too overpacked. Yeah. At least we didn't get an emo Peter Parker. Yeah, that's a good point. Number seven. What sucks is that there's seven more movies worse than Amazing Spider-Man number two. And one of them happens to be another comic book film. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah, I, I love the show, though, from the 1980s, you know, I, you know, I have the first movie, you know, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in a Half Show, Turtle Power, um, so, I mean, this movie had so much potential, but then you had Matt, Michael, not, then you had Michael Bay, and I know this is, I know he's a producer, he's not the director, but goddamn, um, Liebsman, I forget his first name, um, Jonathan Liebsman. Is the director and Michael Bay is the producer, but this feels like a Michael Bay fest, another Michael Bay movie. We already have another. We already had a Michael Bay movie this year. It's called Transformers: Age of Extinction, which I happen to not see. Thankfully, I know, I know it's terrible. Um, yeah, but um, how do you say? How do you say? This movie I think was also terrible as well for a uh, technical Michael Bay film. It was. It's, I know technically it's not his movie, but you know whatever. Is his movie is not, I don't know, that's up for you to decide. I really could care less. Overall, it was just a terrible movie. I mean, it just relied on too many, it just, re, it was just, it just relied on too many stuff. Um, over-sexualizing Megan Fox, as usual. Um, Will Arnett, he had really no reason to be here, in my opinion. I mean, his character was, I mean, his character, his character's from the TV show, and he's not really a character that we've, we're wanting to be on a movie. Like, nobody ever says, oh my gosh, I can't wait till, till Vernon. Um, or whatever his character's name. I can't wait till Vernon's on the, on the, on the movie. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. No, no, we don't hear that. We always hear, I can't, I can't wait till they put Bebop and Rocksteady, um, or Krang in, in the movie, in the second show. No, they're not, and they, I hear they're going to do that for the second movie. Hopefully they do at least put Be Bebop and Rocksteady and Krang in the second show, that'd be, be better. Then, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to have Will Arnett here again. I mean, the writing was terrible. The acting was just terrible. The hell is with the special effects. Um, Sp Splinter looks like a, I don't even know what the hell Splinter. Splinter's not a rat in this movie. What the hell is he? The turtles look like a bunch of jacked up hulks. They're about Hulk size. I'm not even kidding you. And you know you have Michelangelo trying to hit on April O'Neil, which is actually which is pretty common in in the TMNT lore, you know. Um, but here they, they it's like they're going for it. They're going for it. Like they want this relationship to happen. And really, and like for example, the TV shows from the 1980s, you kind of they kind of just hint at it, but he doesn't really go far as, you know, as, as saying much that, you know, you're pretty, or, you know, he's like, you know, he just as like, you're pretty, but aside from that, he really doesn't go that far, but here, he's like, he's like, yeah, we got to talk about adult content, mm-hmm, yeah, and even, and speaking about the turtles, aside from the fact that they look like jacked up, almost like Hulk size, they're pretty, they, 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 they throw in the stereotypes, you know, you have, 
you know, Michelangelo is the cool dude to give him the, the you know, the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian style seashell thing, you know, um, Donatello, he's, he's a nerd, so give him some glasses, um, so, you know, the, you know, uh, Raphael, he's a tough guy, so give him the bandana, and Leonardo, he's a leader, so give him the most protection or whatever, so, yeah, um, I'm gonna start, stop ranting on it, because this is a movie I could rant on forever, but there's six other movies I need to rant on uh, for a while longer, so, yeah, number six is gonna be... Yeah, hell yeah, this one probably be surprised a lot of you. And you're not you're not going crazy. Number six is gonna be the Lego movie. Oh my gosh. Okay, I will admit I will admit uh that the animation for it was pretty great. I will admit that the animation was actually pretty good. The way they did a stop motion, I will compliment it on that. Um and I do believe that it did get snubbed at, for the Oscars and for the animated best animated feature. Just purely for me, for me, just purely off based the animation, and what other people and what the majority of other people say, I do think it got snubbed for the Academy Awards. That being said, me personally, I didn't like the film. Okay, and again, you have to remember this is all this whole list is objective. Same thing with the best times and best. This is an objective list. Okay, so yeah, for me, number six is a Lego movie. Now, why do I dislike the Lego Lego movie? Well, for me, it just didn't go anywhere. In my opinion, it just didn't go anywhere. Um, it's trying to be like this in a sense it's trying to be this father son type of movie but you really don't get that feeling all the way till the end and it's supposed you're supposed to feel it like all the way from the beginning in my opinion um also you have everything is awesome which is a really annoying song how did that how did that get nominated for best song in the for the oscars i have no idea i think for the movie it would have been better for you know for best animated feature because logically i mean really for if lego movie were and um, um were nominated for best animated feature it's its only competitors would have been the would have been Big Hero Six and How to Train Your Dragon Two, okay? Or uh, maybe Princess of Cayuga from what I hear. But honestly, for me, Big Hero Six and Dra um, Dragon Two, How to Train Your Dragon Two would have been from what I hear um, better. So yeah, um, Box Trolls, I didn't see it, but uh, yeah, that one I from what I've read, I don't even know how it got nominated. I still say that this one was up to for the Oscars, but just because of its animation. Um, for me, this movie just didn't go anywhere. The writing was eh. Um, the voice acting was it was tolerable, but overall, I just, it just didn't go anywhere for me, so yeah, number six is the Lego movie. Speaking of movies that everybody seems to enjoy, except for me, 22 Jump Street. I'm gonna be honest, I thought this would be my worst movie, I thought this would top the list for worst movie of this year. I thought this one would be number one. And then I watched four other movies that were way more shittier than this. I'm gonna admit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna completely admit it. I, I was, I thought 22 Jump Street was gonna be my number one, but nope. Um, yeah, for me, it was just a really lazy movie. I, I didn't really like the first one in my opinion, and this one I really didn't like it. Um, they teased the fact that they're gonna make a sequel at the end, which I know we're not. But then you had the, you, you had the whole Sony leak. Then they said there's possibly a there's a possibility that Men in Black and and the Jump Street franchise may intertwine or whatever crossover. And I'm like, what the fuck? Um, you know, Jonah Hill, I hate him as an actor. I mean, he does have a few good roles. I will say, like in Wolf of Wall Street, I thought he was pretty decent. Um, and in, and this is the end. I thought he was pretty decent. But aside from that, you know, for me, Jonah Hill just annoys me. He was un he, he he was just boring in this film. Channing Tatum and Ice Cube, I think they were really the only ones trying. For me, the script was just were bad, and the only real times the script was actually good was when they went. Read really, for me, the only time when the movie was good was when they had Ice Cube on 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 the movie. Same thing with the first one. Every time they have Ice Cube on the movie, the mo the whole the whole um the whole thing just is better in my opinion. I have no idea why, but I think it's because with Ice Cube, they actually give a shit about him, which is which is ironic because you're supposed to be giving a shit about Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum. You can't give a shit about Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill. Hell no. So yeah, 22 Jump Street, for my opinion, is one of the worst movies of this year, and I'm surprised it's not on the top of my list. But that's because there's four other shittier films. That... No, so yeah. Number cuatro, número four. Four is the November Man. Man was a shit. Um. So yeah, in my opinion, this one tried to be the James Bond movie for the poor man. I mean, you have Pierce Bronze and then you have um, an ex-Bond girl. So, 
in a sense, it is the James Bond film for the poor man. Thing is, it's not really a good James James Bond film. It's it wouldn't even qualify for a Bond film. Oh my gosh, was this this movie was lazy as fuck. Um, Pierce Bronson, he's trying, but really, I mean, he's trying at times, at times, and I do have to say, um, you know, Pierce Bronson, there's times where he's just bullshitting it, and there's times when he's somewhat trying, and what's ironic is that Pierce Bronson is the best actor in this whole thing. Everybody else just sucks, and it's bad, because it's even worse, because Pierce Bronson is barely giving a shit, he's barely trying, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, when the one actor who's very trying is the best in this whole place, do something wrong, and also the writing is terrible, the, the whole logic, it's a bunch of stuff that's just really illogical and behind it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, overall, it's just a terrible movie. Um, the, action, the, uh, yeah, the action scenes were pretty bad. I mean, there were a few that were pretty good, they were pretty decent. And I will admit, the ending was pretty good, in my opinion, at least the last, like, maybe two or three minutes were... Spoilers, where someone gets sniped the fuck out on a boat and he just falls to the water. I will say that was actually pretty funny and pretty good. And I think it was good, one, because the guy died in the most hilarious way, and two, because it was finally ending. So yeah, November Man. Ugh. Not the James... Look, if you want to uh, if you want to watch a James Bond movie for the poor man, either A, go with any of the parodies for James Bond, which have at least five of them from what I know. Um, you have a few, um, uh, um, spoof James Bond movies, um, for, and they seem pretty good. Or just go with North by Northwest, which is also another, um, James Bond for the poor man. That's actually a pretty good movie. But never go for the November Man. That's a terrible movie. Okay, number three. Three. And number three is a million ways to die in the West. And for me, there's a million ways to I could have died on the couch while watching this. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, people here could die in any way from being crushed by a giant ice cube to farting. So yeah, and speaking about farting, they have a shit ton of fart jokes. And it's just painfully not funny. It's just painfully bad. In my opinion, the acting is terrible. And the writing is terrible. And this is by the same guy who gave us Family Guy. And by the same guy who gave us Ted. Okay, so how is this bad? Well, I, um, let me tell you. Bad acting. Um, and really bad plot. Um, let's see. Some guy taking a shit on a, inside a hat. Um, really bad jokes. Uh, writing. Bad action. Should I go on? It's a terrible movie. Apparently, though, it's not as terrible as the next two movies. Number two. So, yeah, when you talk about Oscar bait, I'm thinking for 2014 Oscar bait, this is the one I'm thinking Exit is. Gods and Kings, or Kings of Gods, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, This was a terrible, terrible movie. So, yeah, I told you the religious films are going to come back. Not in a good way, though. Um, yeah, so how do you take the story of Moses to hell? I mean, it was, it was terrible. Um, the acting was terrible to begin with. Everybody was overacting their, uh, their ass off. Um, you know, from, you know, Christian Bale and, uh, who the hell was, I don't even remember who, the, who else was in this movie. Um, so, yeah, uh, whatever. See, the cast is forgettable for some reason, even though it's made out of A-list and B-list actors. Um, the only one I could think of is Christian Bale. Oh, that was just a bad movie. Um, this, I mean, yeah, overacting, poorly written. Um, the, the, split, the splitting of the Red Sea, I think, is the most important thing, and they fucked that up really bad. Uh, I mean, overall, it's just a really terrible film. And, but not, and I, th and I thought after watching this, this one would top my number one. I was dead wrong. Dead wrong. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Numero uno. Number one is trans fucking sentence. 
also known as Trans Transcendence, also known as the worst movie of this year. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit when this first came out, I actually gave it a good score. I gave it a seven out of ten. I think seven eight, seven out of ten or seven point five out of ten. I'm gonna admit. But then I rewatched and I thought it was uh, it has some problems. I now I noticed. So I you know so yeah, and I watched this and th throughout the whole year I watched it five times and every time. I dis I disliked it every more and more. Here, the first viewing seven out of ten. The next one like six out of ten. The next one five out of ten. The next one four out of ten. By here I was at two out of ten. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean yeah, just movies that after, after every viewing you're gonna like more, and just movies that after every viewing you're gonna like less. Okay, I understand that. This one though, what the fuck? I want, I've never um, watched a movie so many times and kept disliking it more and more and more and more. I mean, there are times I have, you know, dis disliked a movie a bit more, but usually after a couple of viewings, I'm, I, I usually stay around the same area, you know. Um, for example, uh, The Alvin and the Chipmunks, the first one, for example. Um, I When I first watched it, I gave, I was like, a te I was like 10 or 9. There's, oh, so I gave it like a an eight out of ten. I rewatched it again when I was like thirteen. I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good movie, six out of ten. And right now for me, the Alvin and Chipmunks movies is still like six out of ten. It still stays there. Sometimes it's a, it's a five out of ten. Sometimes it's a six out of ten, just depending on my mood. But this one is staying at a two out of ten. And, and I rewatched two more times, two or three more times. And I and it, at the end, and it's still a two out of ten in the last three times. The the one good thing I could say about this movie is the cinematography. Cinematography is amazing. Oh my gosh, was that amazing? But then again, it's made by cinematographers, and yeah, this is and this is both a di directorial debut and a writing debut. Yeah, don't direct again and don't ever write again. That was a terrible movie. Yeah, um, has bad has bad acting. Um, bad acting. I don't want to say it's, the acting is terrible because they do try, but it's pretty bad. And I think that's due to the fact that the script is horrendous. Also, the pacing is horrendous. I mean, sometimes it goes slow, then it's really fast-paced, and then it's slow, really slow, really slow. Yeah, the pacing is horrendous. The 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 writing is horrendous. The the special effects, the special effects and the cinematography are pretty decent. But aside from that, fuck it, it's a terrible movie. So yeah, that's my top ten worst movies of 2014. Um, so yeah, just to go over it again for for dishonorable mentions. I'd have to go for with neighbors. P fifty one Dragon Fighter and the Equalizer. Number ten is Heaven is for Real. Number nine is Noah. Number eight is the Amazing Spider Man two. Um, number seven is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number six is the Lego Movie. Number five is Twenty Two Jump Street. Number four is November Man. Number three is A Million Ways to Die in the West. Number two is Exodus, Exodus of Gods and Kings. And number one is Transcendence. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically it for this review or list, whatever. Um, if you guys want to check out my top ten best movies of 2014, I'll leave an annotation here. And yeah, that's basically it for now. Subscribe, and already subscribe. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. So definitely do stay tuned for that. Aside from that, like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer, and comment down below as to what you guys thoughts are on this list and what do you think is the top ten worst movies of this year, or at least the top ten, top five. Or if you just want to give out the worst movie, of, you just want to see the worst movie of this year, by all means, comment down below. Let me know. I really want to know who 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 else agrees with me um, that this is one of the worst movies of this year, or what other movies um, are pretty bad. I, and I heard um, some of the January release movies were bad. Um, and some most of the horror movies this year were bad, such as Ouija and Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. Um, Age of Extinction was pretty bad. I heard. Um, and, uh, Hercules, Legend of Hercules from January, I heard was pretty bad, and, yeah, I'm happy I didn't see those, but I still had to watch through this shit ton. Yeah, that's basically it, this is Daniel Mark, signing off.